guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're jumping back into some more Stone Block 3, getting our automation on. That's right, singularities start now. Well, well, welcome back. Today we have even more craziness to get done. Um, we are back in our beautiful world, and uh, well, as you can see, uh, we have uh, several singularities to work out the solution to. And um, I think at this point, we should start heavily focusing on the three different mods that uh, are going to take the most time to get through. Honestly, the quickest one to get through is going to be Batania. So Batania, I was thinking, I, I already kind of created this area. I was thinking, should I build it here? But then I was like, we don't really need to get in Batania that far. All we need is just enough mana to be able to create mana steel because that's, that's all we need for this. Um, and to make mana seal is really, really easy, so long as we have a simple little automated setup for it. So I was thinking, do I need all this room? Absolutely not. So we are going to be getting into two different mods today, and hopefully we can also figure out a solution for automating one of them. Um, now, what are we? What am I talking about? Well, the wall singularity is from Compact Machines, and we actually need to get 48 of them and I'm assuming we're gonna have to automate them in some fashion uh, because that's just the chosen way, right? So this is going to require a few different things, but first we need to make ourselves the field projector and uh, that's gonna require a couple of different things. It looks like they changed the recipes on these. Um, so miniature base, uh, okay, heavy plates. These are actually EMCable as well, which is nice. So there's that. And then the miniaturization projector. Very simple, perfect. Um, and then all of this together is going to end up just making the projector, right? So it looks like we can put these in here just to make sure we have them. Uh, this is what we're gonna use to craft the field projectors. So all we need is four field projectors, by the way, to be able to do this. And I also need to figure out how tall these need to be and how they need to be placed because it's been a little bit been a little bit since I've used these. Um, so placing them down, I think, ah, it does show how close we can make these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven blocks apart. So uh, let's see, there'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need to place one here, one here, but I think it needs to be raised up a bit. And as you can see, two pillars here, place one, and then the same thing right here. Oh, this, these are actually really off, aren't they? What have I done? Problem with these is I don't know if they need to be three tall or what. Almost wonder if there's a book for them, potentially. Uh, so yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probably means it's gonna need to be right here. And voila. It's done. Okay, so they can go one block lower, uh, judging by the, uh, <laughs> the the sphere here. Or, <laughs> can I call it a sphere? It's a square. Literally, I have no idea what's wrong with my brain today. So now that we have this set up, let's take a look at the recipe. It was iron block, right? Just an iron block and redstone on top, which is very simple. And then ender pearl to trigger it. Was that correct? I think so. Um... It doesn't, yeah, an inner pearl to trigger it. So here's what we have to do. We have to have something, like a builder, for example, place this down and this on top. And then we also have to have, after this is placed, some way to know that this was placed, which we could probably use an observer um, on the bottom of this, to detect that that was placed, send a redstone signal to, I don't know, a dropper that throws an ender pearl, and that's all we need to do, right? I think, and I have no idea where our stuff went. It just, oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, and there we go, so we have the walls. So it doesn't do an animation, I guess, anymore. Um, so that's exactly what we need to do. So we should probably set that up. Now, this is just for this recipe, because I do wanna make myself a compacting machine, first and foremost, um, and to do that, there is a tiny version. Um, honestly, tiny might work. Tiny might work. 
Um, and you can see right here what it actually requires as far as the size goes. It, yeah, so we can probably make a maximum of this. Uh, the compact machine. So this is going to be the normal size. I think that's perfectly fine. I'm going to go with a normal size. And what we need to do is we just basically fill the whole thing with the materials that we're generating here. And it just needs to be gold on the inside. That is literally it. Gold on the inside. Um, anything else different? And then an ender pearl still. So we got to get a gold block. And we just place that bad boy right there. Boom. We're ready to go. All I gotta do is toss that in there. Boom. <laughs> it does this crazy smoke particle effect. Once I get this machine, I think I'm gonna set up the automation for it before we move into Batania. So that way we can definitely make sure we have a stockpile of these. So there we go. Compact machine. And the only other thing we need is going to be a shrinking device. Thankfully, we already have one because we got one a long time ago from quests. All right. So I can put this literally anywhere. Here is perfectly fine for now. And I right click this and here we go. We literally get teleported into this tiny little cube here into another dimension. And the reason for this is to potentially help with the lag. Now, once I'm in here, I like to set my spawn points. So It'll be shift right clicking where I'm standing at and I should get teleported here next time. But yeah, this place should work and to get out I just right click to get out. Super, super simple. Now, Let's automate the process here. And this is gonna involve the builder. So now to get this thing automated, I think this is what I'm gonna to have to do. So right here, I have a space chamber set up to copy these two blocks. And these space chamber blocks, you need them placed just like this. Um, and you need uh, eight of them worth one of them being the controller. And then I just place this down. I'll go ahead and do this again, place it down. And then I just right click this and it successfully creates and then I just need, I believe, to click on here and it's going to tell me the items that it's got inside of it. And then all I got to do is place this inside and bam, right here is where it's going to place. Of course, we can maneuver this and change where it's going to place, but that is where it's going to place for right now. Um, now, we need to make sure it has the blocks. So I'm going to use a personal EMC. I think that's fine. That's got nine slots which will be plenty to place in here. And I'm just using this as an example for right now. We need uh, blocks of iron and redstone, which I, I just have them all on me. So there we go. Um, actually, no, we need the, we don't need the personal, we need the other one. EMC link refined. That's the one we need. So on top of here, refined, we place this and a piece of redstone. And then in reality, lever, it'll place it, right? And then we can set this actually to be pulsed if we want. So ignored, activate, on to activate. I think we can give this a redstone pulse though, and it will work instead. Um, so a button, for example, or even a redstone clock. I think we can have that run. Yeah, every time it receives a redstone signal, which is going to be perfect. Now, once this is placed, right, we need to detect that the block was placed there. And uh, we can do that with an observer. Uh, since it's not inside this uh, this cube, we should be fine. And then what we can do is have a RF tools, uh, not timer. Timer is actually what we might use to automate this. But we can have a uh, RF tools, if I can get over here. Uh, redstone receiver and transmitter. And so to get these to link together, um, let's use some redstone here. I have to get some range upgrades. Um, redstone. Place it down underneath. I mean, it can go right underneath this on this block. So get some cobblestone redstone. Once this detects something underneath it, it's going to send a redstone signal. Right here, we could just use vanilla redstone, honestly. Nah, <laughs> let's use this. So the transmitter is what's going to send it. Um, I believe place down to create a channel. Um, this is going to be the one that sends the signal. And then the receiver 
we right click on the transmitter and then we place that down and that's going to send a signal as soon as this gets a signal hopefully the it can detect it fast enough so if i put an ender pearl in here and i place a block there we go it sends out an ender pearl so this is going to be perfect this will be perfect uh oh but it also shoots one out it shoots one out also whenever it disappears uh which is a thing is there a detector like a block detector mm, doesn't really seem like it, there's anything that i'm kind of wanting this should work this should work it may use more ender pearls than i want but honestly ender pearls are free with emc so yeah let's let's actually get this placed in and get it fit to where it's actually going to place every time now one goofy thing i had to do was this i actually had to move this back one and uh just to be able to get it to actually present back one because i tried modifying this and it's not doing anything on the offset um for whatever reason i can't modify the offset i can change what build corner it starts in but not able to change anything else from there unfortunately so this should be just about ready to go all i have to do now is place this here and then we'll get our link hopefully that doesn't obstruct anything doesn't look like it does perfect we'll place this in this in and it's got everything all we need is a button and Little too quick, maybe, on this? Maybe it's a little too quick? Or... Or this actually needs to be a little bit further back, which is fine. I can go ahead and have this go right here. And we can set up the same thing. Redstone receiver. Let's try it again. If it has ender pearls. <laughs> Oh boy, all the trial and error. All right, let's try it. Okay, still not doing exactly what I want to do. I almost wonder if this can't be automated in this way. Because I just did it by hand. And it worked just fine. So, I place that. And then I can give this an update. That works, but it doesn't like the builder placing it. So for this setup, I have literally tried just about every block placer that exists. So we've tried the builder, we've tried the factory block placer. I am literally left with one other option. I did realize that I can actually place it in the corner here too to work. For some reason, some of these placers don't work. Even if they place the block, it doesn't count as a player. Um, so like if I'm not here, it does work. Like, if I manually place, I think it's the redstone that's jacking everything up. Uh, so if I place the redstone and I throw a pearl, now it works, right? Because it, it, it's something to do with the redstone. So I am left with one other option. And that is the industrial foregoing ones. If these don't work, it, we are in trouble. We are in some trouble here. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can't get this to work. Now, this is going to need power. Very, very simple. Power in the back. I'm going to just set that up for right now. We'll figure out how we work out this later on. Um, but we'll set this to uh, run on pulse for right now. Run on pulse. And if I give this a block of iron and I give this some redstone, I just want to make, I hope this works. Give this some redstone. Hit this with a button. Boop first. The place. Come on now place oh it sent a redstone signal to the top as well oh uh, it did place okay and then toss it into pearl oh wow out of all of the placers the only one that works is the industrial calling ones nice you gotta love when there's literally only one solution to a problem um so i went through all the trial and error you know what that's literally how this works though make this super simple i guess this is the solution we are going to have this automatically pulling from the EMC links and they need to be pulling in iron for this one. And then this one is going to be pulling in redstone dust. Ah, wow.
Okay, and these are gonna be set to always running. I don't think there's an issue with it always running, but it's gonna be pulling it in. And it should always place as soon as a process happens. Let's clear this and set it to ignored. And we'll find out as soon as that process runs through, it places. And then as soon as it does, we need to use something to dispense a, uh, we need to detect it first. So I'm gonna use the same setup that I was using. Just some good old vanilla redstone. Um, and that should be just fine. Now, as far as timing goes, honestly, you don't have to be very specific with this. Um, I have this basically set to auto run, auto place. It's just gonna go ahead and place. I have a dropper that has ender pearls I'm gonna feed to it. And I just have this set to 320 and it's just going to tick out an ender pearl every 320 uh, ticks. And as you can see, it's dropping the results and that's all I need to worry about. Now I just need to feed this with ender pearls. And then I also need to have a uh, an inner chest uh, basically collecting this. So all you have to do is have a collector and we're good to go. Wow, uh, that was a little bit easier than I thought. Well, all I have now is the uh, the personal EMC link set up. It's feeding all these ender pearls to the machine. And then I have an advanced item collector collecting it with a uh, with this as a whitelist on the machine walls. And the machine walls, everything is going in here as planned. Time to move on. And I've got to get a whole area set up and ready for, well, one particular mod, Batania. And uh, we don't need to get too deep into Batania, but um, I think I have all of the flowers, or I did have all the petals, I think. Uh, maybe not. Do we not have them anymore? Are they in the flower pouch? No? All right, well, I know I had made a, a ton of flowers, but I'm gonna just make some more, I guess. Ah, that's right, I know I did, because <laughs> they're in here. They are definitely in here. Yes, I have petals for all of them. Oh, that makes, that's so much better. So all of the different petals uh, we're gonna use, but the main ones I'm gonna be using are brown, light gray, and we are also gonna need red. We also need white to be able to make ourselves a flower that is going to allow us to transmute or trans, we're gonna be able to change uh, stone into logs, but I'm not gonna be diving too, too deep into Batania, just enough to get us a mana pool that can generate basically a little bit of mana. We don't even need much. So a mana spreader and all of that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a petal apothecary. That is definitely one of the things we need. We need a uh, water. Actually, we probably just use the eggs to fill this up for right now. Nope, cannot use the eggs. Okay, uh, we'll just use a, a but actually we can use this. I do need to pick this up though. I think this will work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and we need seeds. So seeds are gonna be a big part of this. Now, the first thing I need to do is one, two, three, four, and then a seed. This is going to get me a pure daisy. I'm gonna use this over here temporarily for now because we don't need much of it. Stone is the thing we are gonna be swapping and logs are another thing that we're gonna be exchanging. Luckily for us, we can do this and speed up the process tremendously. Yep and then <laughs> just break it like that. This makes this so much nicer, being able to speed this up. Now, thankfully, living wood is EMCable, but living rock apparently is not, for whatever reason. Um, so let's go ahead and take this over here. And living wood is definitely something that I want. Um, and so we should be able to take all of this. First thing we need to make is a wand. So three sticks and any of the petals. Boop, and we have ourselves a wand. This is all. This is one of the big things we need for Batania. Um, and then the other thing is we are going to need a mana pool. And last but not least, we are gonna need a mana spreader. Um, and this is basically what we're going to get into. The other thing that I need to make is a bunch of endo flames. And so actually I don't need a whole bunch of them. I think I need about six of them right now to make a little setup. I honestly think six is probably more than enough. Um, so 
to make that, I believe it's two brown petals, a light gray petal, and a red petal? Yes, I remembered that correctly. You can tell I've made a lot of those. And there we go. So six more, or I get to make five more of these. Oh, wow, they're EMC-able. Five more of these, and we're ready to go. Look at that. So I'm going to make six in total, and then I've got to get some dirt and grass to fill in the area in the compact machine. So I think I have everything set up and uh, that we actually need to set up this micro, I don't know, it's going to be a micro farm for sure. Uh, micro, what is it? Mana seal? <laughs> it's going to be very simple. So basically we need to get an area set up um, that is going to accept our, uh, basically going to accept our coal or our endo flames. Um, and to do this, we are going to have, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just set up here, right? So this is going to be where our mana spreader sits. I'm going to place the, I'm trying to place the mana spreader on top of here. <laughs> if I can, let's place it on top. There we go. On top of the apothecary. I just like to decorate it that way. Endo flames can go right here. And then back here on this wall is going to be a pressure plate that is going to go on here. And this is where things are going to change a little bit because underneath this, I need to detect with the transmitter that uh, I need to have this rotated around. I need to detect that redstone signal, basically. So let's pop over here. We need to detect when an item lands on this. So there we go. So when an item lands on that, it's going to send a redstone signal to this and then boop. I'm going to take that and we're actually going to send this to a hopper that is going to be on top of an open crate. So here's the open crate. We're going to have a hopper that's going here. And then I'm going to send this redstone signal to this block. Um, to do that, I could just do this and place that there. I think this one was connected. Did I right click this? Make sure it was connected to that channel. Yes, it's connected to channel two. So make sure this is pointed in the correct direction. So there we go. And I can remove the dirt because it'll actually stay there. And then on top of that, we can just use a personal EMC link with charcoal. And what we should see is charcoal land there. And that picks it up and starts to refill over and over again. So very simple in the automation there. Now we just need a mana pool like this to be sent here. Now, the dropper for this is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to use sort of a timed dropper, I think. But first, we need to link this to this. So we start getting a little bit of mana. Now, I need a dropper. I can use this sort of similar setup here for this and say, hey, if there's uh, mana in here, we can say, go ahead and drop. Um, but I think I want to use a timer setup for this because I know this little setup's not going to generate a whole lot of EMC. Uh, or a whole lot of mana. So, uh, let's go ahead and get all of the tools needed to do that. I just basically need another one of these open crates, really. So I think I got this figured out. I think I have, I think I have an idea. So what I'm going to do is use a comparator here. And at the moment, as you can see, it's only sending out a redstone signal of one. And I think if it's completely empty, it won't send out a redstone signal at all, I believe. Um, so I can use this to my advantage with the redstone transmitter. And so the transmitter will be able to detect this. We'll have a receiver. Um, so with this single redstone signal, if it doesn't have anything in the mana pool, I think it's it goes off. Um, so if that's the case, we can place this on top and then I can hope to have a advanced item collector that we're gonna have to use a filter on to hopefully pick up the items. So the advanced item collector will go in here and we'll start collecting the items and we can change the range and everything to make sure it only contains this area so we don't even have to worry about the other stuff. Let's see, let's range this down as much as possible. So there we go, it contains to this little area, which is perfect. And as you can see, we have a filter down here so we want to blacklist items, I would say. Uh, so we don't want iron going in, in here, right? So I'm assuming this is set to blacklist. We'll have to find out. Uh, so I'll set iron and I definitely don't want charcoal going in here. So that means if I drop this item, 
Will the collector pick it up? Well, of course not, because that's full. Um, hmm, let me take this out. Is it gonna work? Maybe not, hold on, give me a second. Okay, so yeah, that, let's make this a little bit simpler. Let's just say only accept this item, because I think it's in whitelist mode. And then, there you go, it actually went in. Perfect, it's only gonna take that one item. Nice, okay, so now that that is set up, um, we need to set up our hopper. And then our redstone, which is a receiver here, is going to be linked to this. Boop. And we can say, hey, only emit a redstone signal. Let's actually move this. Emit a redstone signal to the hopper, stopping it, basically. Um, if it's full? You know what, now that I think about this, um, I might actually need to reverse this. Because right now, I think if I put this in, it's just going to start sending iron constantly. Or it's not going to send iron at all because it's being stopped currently. Um. So how do we stop the? How do we reverse that? You know what? I'm making this way harder than it needs to be because in reality, all I need is this EMC link to literally be like down here, like closer to here. Oh man, all I need is for it to go ahead and uh, use a use a brass, brass puddle for this. Oh man, what's wrong with me? So I should be able to place the brass funnel on top of my EMC link like this, right? And have it Sending out the items, and it should detect the items that are down here. And if I put iron here... Oh, it's going to send out a bunch, isn't it? It sent out 42. It's not sending out any more. We want it to send out literally one at a time. And so once there's enough mana in there, it will get collected. That is so much easier. <laughs> Than what I was doing. I don't know why. I was like, huh, is there an easier way to do this? And I was like, oh my gosh, literally. I, I It literally dawned in my head brass funnels. Ah, so, the only other way to speed this up to make this go faster is to maybe duplicate this setup right here and to add more endo flames and just add mana spreaders in a different format. I think if I put the mana spreaders here, here, and here, or the endo flames here, here, and here, and three mana spreaders, that should be more than enough to make this go faster. So there we go. After all of that, pretty smooth sailing and is uh, working as intended. And this is just one of the few automations we're gonna have to do. So now as far as what's left, as far as uh, singularities go, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go through here and if anything gets EMC, I'm just gonna remove it from the list because it's not something that we really have to focus on really hard to automate. So. If it has EMC, it's going out the window. So after doing that, man, it really lowers the list of things left to automate. And if we do two or three automations per episode, yeah, I think uh, we're gonna get through this pretty quick. Now, in my opinion, I'm going to be going through mechanism incredibly fast. Uh, so I think next episode, potentially, I will be diving into mechanism. We'll be doing that so fast if you blink, you're going to miss it because we are going to get everything done and, and automating Polonia in literally under 30 minutes in an episode. So that is going to be incredibly fast. And uh, I think everything else um, is going to be pretty easy to fit like two or three automations an episode. I think the hardest thing though, I'm not joking, the hardest thing is going to be making this stew, like I said. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did and you have a solution to this behind me, please comment down below. Also click that subscribe button if you did enjoy today's episode. That's all I ask of you. And guys, give this video a huge thumbs up. I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.